again, you have a lot of representation here from a lot of different companies, competitors, uh, complementary products who have all worked together very hard to um, come up with the OpenVPX standard, which we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. It actually was approved by the, uh, the, the working group uh, steering committee last Friday. So this is the formal event uh, here tonight. We're going to go through what is VPX and why OpenVPX. And a lot of people have been asking those questions. Part two, two is the customer benefits of it. Uh, uh, then we're going to actually have the specification handoff from the chair of OpenVPX to the chair of Vita 65, which will be taking over the spec. Then we'll, there'll be a discussion of Vita 65, you know, what's going to happen next. And then some Q&A from the steering committee, any questions you may have. And then we have a, a press giveaway. We have a press kit, which is actually a memory card uh, that you'll all get. So on here is all our material and uh, data sheets and brochures and press releases from all the members who wanted to submit it for you. So that's all on here, that you'll be able to take this. This spec was a culmination of, I don't know when it started, January, February, of a lot of companies. And again, I just, there were two or three names that I just, I, I wanted to mention that, you know, I was polling around, a, you know, who would put the most hours in, but there were uh, quite a few people. One was Greg Rocco from Mercury, uh, Peter Ja, is that correct, from Curtis Wright, and then uh, Bob Ford from Boeing, who isn't here, uh, but just a lot of hours by a lot of people, and it was just a, from being outside of, uh, you know, the payload and all that, looking in, it was an incredible pull together by, you know, people that normally compete against one another. I'm so going to turn this over to Ian Dunn. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Ian Dunn. I'm the chair of the steering committee for the OpenVPX initiative, as well as the uh, CTO for, for Mercury Computer Systems. I probably don't have to, uh, to lecture this audience on, on what VPX is. I think you guys are, it's been around long enough. Everybody's probably familiar with it. But what I will say is, is that um, one of the interesting things about VPX is the fact that it was a forward-looking standard, very extensible from an I.O. perspective, uh, you know, headed for the future from a rugged and speed point of view, made it a solid foundation for this work. I think if we had tried to accomplish this, on a, on, a, on a standard that was more legacy oriented, uh, we would have ended up with far too many trade-offs that we couldn't have, uh, couldn't have surmounted in this case. So 46 was a solid foundation. On top of that, the, the dot specifications, though numerous and somewhat, uh, somewhat difficult to manage, they also were a solid foundation. A lot of people had put a lot of work into what they wanted to use VPX for, and there was already a fair amount of, of industry uptake both from the, the leading system integrators as well as from the vendor community uh, in a number of the dot specs, and there's already a fair number of successful programs have deployed around VPX. So it was a, a very important foundation that the, the community built off of. Um, the, the challenge, however, was is that going forward as the Defense Department uh, in mostly, you know, the, the Defense Department, some of the international community, in the current theater of operations, they've put a lot of pressure on speed, a lot of pressure on quick turn, and uh, open architecture has become, you know, a favorite buzzword. Um, and so we needed a foundation that was, that had a, a you know, more built-in interoperability and took a bigger systems pro approach to the, to the VPX standard. So this initiative was launched. Uh, in a second, you'll see uh, about 28 companies participated in the activity. It was launched earlier this year. We're, I'm not exactly sure the date. Was it January? January. Okay, thank you. January was launched, um, and we put a deadline on it of October uh, 14th, actually. It was the internal deadline we were working to. Uh, we missed it by two days, but that's not too bad. Uh, we used that to, uh, to drive a large community of participants to build a top-down approach to the VPX standard uh, and add to it. Um, you'll notice that the idea was not new. In fact, uh, I think a, a fair amount of credit should go to Ray Alderman, who, who over the last couple of years has been talking about the need for a systems approach. Um, hadn't really articulated a way to do it necessarily, uh, but was very, um, was very uh, committed and supportive of this activity when it, when it was brought into play. Okay. So the, the very first thing that took place uh, towards the launch was to go out and get the community involved. A lot of people fanned out to find out what systems integrators wanted to participate, what were their leading problems, uh, and that culminated in, in the launch in January. Uh, we signed a, uh, an MOU. Uh, the process was 
there was the process was taken outside of Vita, at least initially, uh, in some ways to bootstrap the process, to create a sense of urgency, to put a set of, of different procedures in place, and to run the thing like a group project. Um, I think that you, we, there was some debate about the wisdom of that, and that's fine. There probably will be for forever. But I think that uh, in the end of the day, one of the things that you can look back upon is, is the amount of work and the speed at which the work was accomplished is a, is a true testament to, uh, to, to what took place here. Uh, to have pulled off the development of a specification roughly in nine months, 300 some odd pages, probably uh, you know, upwards of, of 10, maybe 20 man years worth of work was something we could not have done um, given the, the precedent had been established in the standards body. So this was a very good acceleration process. Um, what we're here today to celebrate is a, this is a celebration of the end point. The specification was released for vote uh, last week, and the steering committee approved it on uh, Friday officially. And that began the transfer of all of the work product as well as the result uh, to the VITA community and to VITA 65 in particular, uh, which was uh, codified in the MOU that we all signed together, that that would be the landing place for the work. All of the comments, all of the, all of the work that went into the specification as well as the final specification are being turned over to VITA 65, and I'll let Mark in a bit talk about uh, the process that moves forward around that. This is a list of the companies that participated. Um, there is not a company on this list that didn't put a lot of work into this. Uh, some companies decided to be part of the steering committee. The steering committee was somewhat of a unique structure that we put in place. We felt it was necessary because of, of the number of companies and the, and the places they play in the value chain that we needed, both a technical working group as well as a, a committee that could handle any politics that came up and, and make the final call on the trade-off. I think 12 uh, member companies participated in the steering committee. They had the time, uh, felt as though uh, they had enough business uh, scope on this that they wanted some control over the final outcome if there were uh, tough trade-offs to be made. Uh, and then the remaining companies uh, just worked on the, uh, on the t uh, TWG, the Technical Working Group. We also instantiated in the middle a marketing working group uh, that you can see the fruits of that here uh, to help us kind of manage the, the public image and the handoff to, to Vita uh, in the public domain as, as the uh, as the, we got towards the end of the work. You uh, certainly can go over there and uh, weigh the spec, get a feel for it. Um, there are uh, about 350 pages. The goal of the specification was to take the scope and breadth of VPX and give it some structure from a top-down point of view. And that's what you find embodied in that specification is, you know, a systems taxonomy, a systems architecture to guide how you navigate uh, the, uh, the VPX specifications, and it's a family of specifications, not limited entirely to 46. Um, you'll find in there backplane architectures, a module, module specification, chassis, chassis information. Uh, a large uh, scope of work was put under the, the uh, control of, the, of this system specification and, and, and organized in such a way that should uh, deliver a faster time to market for the community. One, uh, one word as we got close to the end of this and hit about the 9.0 version of the specification, we asked particularly the LSIs to start circulating this among their engineers and give us some feedback as to, you know, is this an easier document to handle? Does it uh, simplify the design process, the design of solutions and platforms for the defense market and the embedded market in general? And so far the answer there has been that this is a um, a guidebook that improves uh, the time, will, it certainly improves the time to design uh, the time to requirements from where we, uh, we left off with the VPX standard. And I think a lot of us were, were gratified by that and maybe even somewhat surprised that, that, that even in draft form the specification was delivering a value to the lead systems integrators already. The, um, the open VPX community will, will now shift its efforts to Vita 65. I don't know exactly the the member to member uh, transfer, but I believe most of the members of OpenVPX will will commit to finishing the uh, to commit to balloting the work in Vita 65, and uh, uh, Mark Littlefield is chairing Vita 65. So my role ends, and I will uh, and I will turn over uh, turn over the responsibility of the specification to Mark, as well as uh, the marketing arm of uh, of OpenVPX will will shift to helping Ray. Uh, in, at the role in, in the Vita marketing working group uh, towards the, the future of making this a successful launch and uh, specification. 
Um, I don't think we're going to. We're going to go directly into questions. No, we'll, okay. We'll do it at the end. So let me turn it over to uh, to Frank Willis.